Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about this pen. This was lent to me by Joost Appelbaum. This is a Pelican and this is, as you can see in the barrel, this is a very, very pretty pen, I think. This is the Glauco, Cam Glau sorry, Glauco Gambon Special Edition uh, and this is part of the art collection. This is a very interesting pen. I'll talk a bit more about this as I show you the details up close. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. This is a very fun pen and this is a Pelican I've actually really enjoyed fiddling around with. So let's get started. Gag man, Pelican. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at this particular pen. Um, this is Sorry for that weird scrapey noise. This is the Pelican M600 in the art collection. Glauco, I can't say this name, I don't know why not. Glauco Gambon. Gambon. I'm going to slightly, sorry for the camera moving, I'm just kind of, just trying to put the um, cord of my microphone under something so doesn't get in the way. Okay, here we are, the box. I'm going to try and open this box. It has this outer sleeve. And then you have a very nice box inside. I'm just putting it sideways so it'll fit in view. We have here a magnetic clasp. Opens up the pen condom. Then we have, well, the pen would go there. Um, and then we have this very nice artwork that is also on the pen. I'll show you that uh, in a second. Um, we have here, was that it? I thought there was a booklet. Okay, this is not easy to open. Letter opener to the rescue. Okay. Well, there we are. That was a waste of your time, but here we are. Uh, we got a booklet, which is quite nice. We get this sort of uh, uh, print, art print on, on a thicker stock. And then we have the actual booklet. I'm just trying to reassemble this. Uh, the art collection, Pelican explanation, Glauco Gambon, got it this time. <laughs> um, and then we have the actual pen. Uh, give me one second here as I yank out the pen. Here we go and I will zoom in so you can actually see it. Okay, so here is the pen right next to a Pilot Metropolitan. This is an M600 uh, which is quite nice and I'll talk a little bit about it. So it's 516 euros 53 cents. That's without VAT. A sip of tea. The nibs are 14 karat, extra fine, fine, medium, broad. This has a fine nib. And this material, um, this, sorry, this, I should say this finish is based on Pelican ad posters from different types of eras. In this case, avant-garde, the avant-garde era. Uh, and this one happens to be based on a poster by Glauco Gambon, who was uh, active or was alive, I should say, 1875 to 1930. It has 24 karat gold details, including on the clip, which is, of course, the stylized um, pelican. If you've never seen it before, it's kind of cute with the, with the bill uh, and the eyes and such. Um, what's very interesting to me about this pen is the way it's made. So this barrel is a brass tube base. Then they make grooves, so it's kind of like a guilloche that creates a hologram effect. And then they add 10 layers of clear lacquer, and then there is a printed image colored on top of that. So that's kind of what I wanted to give you as background. There is a lot more information you can find online. Uh, the Pelican's Perch did a fantastic review on this, which goes into great depth. So I, I really wanted to give you an overview here. And if you really want to know more about the pen, check out the Pelican's Perch. Um, so there we have it. Let's look at the parts of this pen. So we have on top the finial. It's a little hard to see, capture in the light properly, but it's the Pelican with its baby chick, right? We have the clip, like I said, a stylized uh, Pelican bill, the eyes, the head, etc. Uh, we have the cap. It looks 
it almost looks blue but I think that's just the light I'm pretty sure that's a, a black we have the center band um, it says Pelikan Souverain Germany and then you have that beautiful barrel now I really have to show you that so think back to that art poster you've briefly seen this finish is really quite something when it can when it does not catch the light it almost looks like black I'll show you that when I talk about likes and dislikes when it does catch the light it comes alive and this is to me one of the most spectacular pelican finishes I have ever seen and that's a lot for me to say I like it much better than the tortoise I like it better than um, for me than the Marquier, but that's a whole different class of pen I think this looks super super cool it's not inexpensive but you do get a very cool looker for it okay so we have that center band we have some gold highlights there we have the piston turning knob it is a piston filler you can unscrew the pen you have a decently sized pen the m600s are not huge I think this is a size that works for a lot of people though you can post it securely then you get a very nicely sized pen and I've always really enjoyed the Pelican nibs not only because they write very nicely but they look very pretty to me those deep grooves uh, on there I think look very very pretty and uh, there's the Pelican logo 14C585 for the gold content and F for fine nice um, I'm going to say plastic feed maybe it's ABS in any case it is not ebonite and then you have this section uh, tapers down flares out a little bit and you have these threads which are a little bit sharp but I'm not really bothered by them as I write the only thing I didn't show you is the flexibility of the clip works very nicely so what we should do next is a writing sample and this year uh, I'm, I'm I ran out of Rhodia I had to happen to have this uh, lying around this is Ayush paper from India let me zoom out just the tiniest bit so what we have here is the uh, bear in mind this paper has a tiny bit of texture to it so it sounds it can make a nib sound a little scratchy by no means is this a scratchy nib if you don't mind I'm going to abbreviate art collection to AC and because I can't seem to pronounce his name Claudio Gambon I will write that out we have a 14k fine nib and the ink is Waterman and um, serenity blue just that washable blue very pleasant writer uh, for me I prefer the slightly bigger pens this section is a little short for me and I tend to feel those threads a bit it's not hurting me but they are a little sharp so if you have larger hands maybe see if you can try out any m600 uh, if, if, before you you buy this to make sure it, it works for you beautiful writer though very very pleasant do a bit of fast writing see how well the feed keeps up very nice really keeps up nicely wetness not a super wet writer but it's nicely tuned I don't I don't find this dry in any way line variation I mean it's it is definitely a round nib as always very careful pelican nibs especially the gold nibs have a bit of a reputation for being softer they're not marketed as flex nibs though so so I mean be be very careful they're not meant to be flex you could squeeze out a little bit of line variation just be very careful again they're not meant for that reverse writing it's smooth but it gets a lot drier and that's pretty much it so why don't we move on to likes and dislikes but I have to show you that material one more time it's so pretty what do I like and what do I not like about this pen well there's a lot to like 
this is a very subjective thing, but I think it's very attractive. The technique used to create that pattern on the barrel is very neat, does almost create something a bit, I almost want to say holographic, um, I'm, I'm sure it's not quite that, but it, it does really stand out. It looks very nice up close, it looks cool from a distance, you have to hit the light exactly the right way, because look, this way it looks almost like a solid black pen, but once it hits the light fully, you get that beautiful material, sorry, that beautiful effect, I should say. Very attractive. I really like that. I also really like that they used a brass liner. The pen is by no means very heavy, however, it feels solid. It feels more solid than it would have if it would only have been resin. I think that is, that is really, really nice. At the end of the day, the most important thing, of course, is that a fountain pen writes, and out of the box, this was a very pleasant writer. Fine nib, uh, no, no specialty nib, just a fine nib, wrote very nicely, and I've really had a lot of fun playing around with this pen, as I said before. Very attractive model, very nice writer. So these are some of the things I like. Now, what about things I don't like? Price, too, is a bit subjective. For some people, the little over 500 euros that this pen costs um, would be pocket change, right? So it's always difficult to say it's expensive. It's certainly not cheap. I don't think anyone would say, oh, yes, that's cheap. That's cheap. I, I don't think that. Having said that, it is a special edition. It is different from the regular Pelican lineup. I think it looks very attractive. It's not just resin, right, with, with the grooves made, with the guilloche, with everything they have done to create this effect. I do see how you would pay more for that. So that is, it's hard to say justified because people say, this is way too expensive, right? But I mean, to me, I see where the price comes from more than in some of the regular Pelicans, for example, not that there's anything wrong with them, but at the end of the day, those are machine made, resin only, so it, 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 I think this is a little different. The one thing I will say is the downside to this brass, sorry, I'm just trying to get my feet behind my desk chair, and I'm very well coordinated on the best of days. <laughs> anyway, the one thing I will say about the brass liner is it eliminates any translucency. If you have the regular striped Pelicans, you hold them up to the light, you can see how much ink is in the pen. With this pen, you cannot. I'm holding it up to, a, there's a window right there, bright window, I can't see a thing. Why would I? It's lined with brass, isn't it? And given that I'm not Superman, I can't look through that. So, you can't tell how much ink you have left. There's no ink window, right? Um, so, unfortunately, it's what we call pen roulette and you don't know whether you have ink or whether you don't. That could be an issue for you if you're on the road a lot. If you're on the road a lot, I don't know if this is the pen to take, but you understand what I mean. There's simply no way of knowing how much ink you have left. Unless you carry a scale, weigh the pen empty, etc. but I'm assuming you wouldn't. So there we are. I'm not saying it's a big deal, but it could be a, an issue for people who do use a pen outside of places where they have access to ink. So there we are. I think it's a very attractive pen, as I've said many times. Uh, I, I definitely think it's it's just a, a very interesting material. They've, they've done a very interesting job with that, so that's really, really cool. A very kind thank you to Joost Appelbaum for lending me the pen. If you're very excited about this, it will be on the website, right? Because I, I just, they, they Joost and I have an arrangement. So they'll get sold, so if you want to check it out, it's uh, it writes perfectly. So there we are. Hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye.